Welcome back to Tactical Accountants. One thing that sets the Ruger Precision apart from most other competition style rifles is its ability to utilize both AI pattern magazines, like you see on this end of the table, as well as SR25 pattern magazines on the opposite end of the table here. I'm not gonna get too much into the nitty gritty differences. Um, let's take this 10 round MDT AI pattern as an example. As you can see, it is a single stack follower. Um, and it does not have any means to hold the bolt open after the last round fired. SR25 magazines, on the other hand, like this 20 round Lancer, are double stack, and they do have a bolt hold open feature. So it is definitely a big plus to me that the Precision can take these magazines. Uh, looking at capacity with the AI, you're limited to either five rounds or 10, or I believe there are some that can take 12 rounds, uh, maybe with an extended base plate. Whereas with the SR25 pattern magazines, 10 is pretty much uh, the minimum height required to ride. You get 20 in this DPMS, 20 in this Lancer, 20 in this uh, high potassium model Magpul, 25 in this Magpul uh, windowed model. This is actually the M118LR, so it can take longer overall lengths. That's what the red follower designates. Uh, this is my magazine of choice for my M&P 10. And then if you absolutely positively need to fire 50 rounds out of your bolt gun without reloading, and who of us hasn't been in that situation before, you can, in fact, run this Magpul D50 drum. Now, I didn't say you can run the D50 very smoothly. That'll be the topic of a video on its own, but it's nice to know that it's there. So on paper, all of these magazines work in the Ruger Precision Rifle. What I'm going to discuss is something a bit more subtle, something that I didn't appreciate until I started using this rifle in competition. And that is just because a magazine feeds doesn't mean you necessarily want that magazine in your go bag when it's matched in, because there are differences. To discuss those differences tonight, I'm going to utilize something that I highly recommend you pick up. If you have one of these rifles or any other bolt action rifle and you want to get proficient with it, and that is snap caps. Snap caps are really key testing this at home for yourself because the rifle doesn't run the same way empty as it does running uh, rounds through it in terms of the feel of the action um, and the nuances between the magazines you really need to run rounds through to pick those up so let me show you what I mean Okay, via the magic of editing, that is all 10 of these loaded. And let's see how it runs. Of course, watching, you weren't able to feel that like I did, but I can tell you that there was noticeable resistance picking up that first round. So the 10 round PMAG is very short and with those rounds double stacked in there, there is quite a bit of friction going on to strip that top round into the chamber. So let's eject it. Again, friction. Because for PRS or for any other competition um, where time is of the essence, any increased movement like you saw there to really lift that bolt and pull it back and drive it forward that's going to throw your reticle off the target if you have a small plate set up at three or four or five hundred yards you want the least uh, resistance in working the action as possible so these sr25 magazines are great they're reliable if you need to put a lot of firepower down range without reloading, you can really get this rifle cooking. Let's compare that to a fully loaded 10 round AI pattern magazine. Again, this is the MDT. 
seating it in the rifle. Some resistance, but felt a lot smoother. Definitely smoother retracting that first round. So that's the advantage of the AI pattern. By being a single stack and having just that one round up top touching both feed lips, um, based on my experience, it is noticeably smoother than the SR25 pattern magazines when fully loaded. There is a negative though. Apologies for the different lighting. I couldn't make the issue happen last night and I didn't want to keep making noise. Um, in any case, this is the Magpul 10 round AI magazine. It's not fully loaded, it has four rounds in it. I think that could have something to do with uh, the issue you're gonna see here because there is not the maximum um, tension on the follower since it's only partially loaded. But here we go. Magazine is seated. Picked up the first round. Did not pick up the second round. Again, if I go very slow about it, you can see the bolt pass over the back of the round. You can actually see the round uh, being tilted there. Uh, now it grabbed the round halfway down and we have a malfunction. So unfortunately, I have had this happen to me at a few matches. Um, I only own one AI magazine, that's this Magpul uh, 10 rounder. Unfortunately, I was also able to replicate this issue once with uh, this 10 round MDT that belongs to Machek, as well as last time at the range with this five round uh, accurate mag. So that is not uh, a negative on AI magazines as a whole. Uh, most precision or competition rifles run these pattern magazines and I imagine people don't have that issue. But if you have a Ruger Precision and um, the tolerances are the exact same as mine, unfortunately it might be something you have to look out for. The other issue that I've noticed with the AI magazines is if you have a stage where you have to top load. So with an empty magazine, uh, if you run dry, all you have to do is drop around in the chamber you see that? I was not going out of my way to make this hang up happen. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't sure how that would actually go on camera the first time. But as you can see, I dropped around into the chamber. I went to uh, push the bolt home and I'm hung up somewhere in no man's land. So pull the bolt back. Get the round back there. Let's try it again. Again, it's hung up. Now, why is that happening? Let me show you. If you look very, very closely at the orientation of the round, right now it is aimed at the chamber. But look what happens when we push it forward. You could hear it. The round dives. The reason for that is this follower is not aimed up towards the direction of the chamber from the magwell. It's just kind of flat. If anything, it's it's maybe pointing down a little. This issue I have noticed with the six millimeter and the six five much more than with the three oh eight. Enter the star of tonight's episode, my newest magazine, this is the American Rifle Company magazine. Um, I'll just get this out of the way. This is steep, so price wise with a 10 round uh, PMAG, really any PMAG you're looking at. 15 to $20. 
for a Magpul AI magazine, you're looking at maybe $30. For something like this MDT, you're looking at maybe $50. This ARC magazine runs around $80. Um, I know that's a bitter pill to swallow. I had one of these before. Um, and luckily it was just my birthday and I got another one from my lovely lady. So thank you very much for that. It's much appreciated. A few interesting things about the American Rifle Company magazine. If we compare it to this PMAG 10 rounder, it is actually shorter, which is very cool because the PMAG is double stack all the way through, whereas the ARC is double stack at the bottom end and tapers to feed single stack like an AI magazine. So it's kind of best of both worlds. So that's very trick. The other thing that I appreciated relating to the top feeding issue is if we compare it to this MDT, I know it's a little difficult to tell on camera, but it is absolutely angled higher up than the AI follower. But rather than showing you there, let's do the same experiment on the rifle with the ARC magazine and top feeding. Take a different snap cap, drop it in the top, and because of the angle of that follower, uh, it's just a nice ramp straight into the chamber. No matter how slowly I go, it's like even if I'm trying to get it to hang up, it works just fine. Since the SR25 and the AI magazines both got a fair shake at this, this is the ARC magazine, fully loaded. Let's see how it cycles. I know you guys can't feel it like I can. Um, I imagine that looks pretty similar to the AI. And in truth, it does feel pretty similar to the AI cycling like that, which is high praise for the AI. But to me, this is the smoothest cycling of any of the magazines I've tried for the precision. Uh, when I was shooting it this weekend, granted it wasn't fully loaded, I was shooting five round groups. There were legitimately times when I chambered around and I was half expecting to hear a click instead of a bang. That's how smooth this magazine is uh, when picking up rounds. Uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. I don't have that many rounds through this relative to say the PMAG, but so far it's been 100% reliable. It top loads 100% reliably. Um, it is the shortest of any of the magazines, uh, if that matters to you. And it's very, very smooth. So I don't usually subscribe to the buy once, cry once way of thinking. I'm a pretty cheap guy, I'm the first to admit it. But as far as these magazines go in this rifle for PRS, they are my recommendation. And that's all I have to say about that. Uh, just as a teaser, there is an accuracy comparison uh, for different loads coming for this barrel. But so far, this is uh, probably the first 20 rounds through the barrel. Five rounds of gold metal match, 130 grain burger. Those four are touching. That little guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. And on the other side, five rounds of SIG 140 grain. Again, four touching. So barrel looks promising so far. Um, we have more of that coming for you. Stay tuned guys. Stay safe. Uh, see you next time.